So when we're looking at this one with the four different uh, atoms bonded in a tetrahedral arrangement, we generate uh, non-superimposable mirror images. And the easiest way to see non-superimposable Im images is to draw them on paper. If you draw them on paper like this, let's say I have M, A, with a B going up, and then C coming out, and D going in, and then build its mirror image. So we'll call this a mirror plane here. So A would stick out like this, B sticks straight up, C comes out like this, and then D goes over like this. Then no, no matter how you rotate, C and D won't match, because if you grab it by B and then flip it, C and D become mismatched. And so there's no way to superimpose them. And so we call these non-superimposable images or enantiomers. Oh, wait. Can you spell that for us? Is it A or N that's spelled? Oh, okay. Enantiomers are spelled E-M. Okay, there we go. Enantiomers. Is this exactly what you're supposed to do? occur a lot in biology because enzymes are, you know, they have the lock and key model for enzymes. So let's say we have an enzyme here and this is our substrate. If our enzyme has a docking place for a C, a D, and an A like this, so our enzyme is like a plate, and then the A docks here, the C docks here, and the D docks here. That's good. But if I flip this around now, and then have A dock in the correct position, then D and C are mismatched. And so this enantiomer will not dock to the enzyme, but this enantiomer will dock to the enzyme. And so this is um, why uh, we uh, These are called optical isomers. The origin for optical isomers is they re rotate uh, plane polarized light different ways. So let's say you have a C and a D like this. Here's your C, here's your D. And let's say polarized light comes in and starts oscillating with the D bond. And so it twists it this way. But the, but the other enantiomer has the D bond on the other side. And so it'll twist the light the opposite direction because the D bonds on the other side, light interacts with the electrons in the bond, right, vibrates them. And so here, plain polarized light comes in, let's say it's interacting with the D, and it twists to the right. Plain polarized light comes in here, it's going to twist to the left, if I reorient at this. Yeah. And so these are optical isomers, enantiomers, these are also called chiral structures, chiral just is another word, but um, you should just know an enantiomer about that, or optical isomer. So the definition of enantiomers is this, non-superimposable mirror images. Let me see if I that right. Let me get rid of this blue screen. All right, Are, uh, did everybody see that? The, the, the two structures, two isomers that you can write for this one. How many isomers can you generate for square planar? Three? Three. Let's get started square planar. Square planar is a bit different because um, Square planar, we, we leave something fixed. It's three, yeah. It is three. There are three variations. If we leave B on top, then we have three variations. We could put an A, C, or D opposite, right? And so, for example, if I had it like this, A, B, C, D, the D's opposite B. All right, the other one, um, we could do this. We could put B on top, and then let's throw the, the uh, D over here, and the C, and we'll put the A opposite. And the last one would be, a, the last final combination could be a B. B on top, B to the right. A B C. 
It doesn't matter, you know, A to the right or A, a to the left. Yeah. Yeah. Ace, A, B. Yeah. There you go. Are these optical isomers? No. They're in different positions. In other words, are they um, mirror images of each other? No, these are not optical isomers. We don't call these enantiomers. What we call these, we call these geometric isomers. For geometric isomers, we use these terms. We call cis, trans, and then we have two more, face, mirror. Um, face mirror only for octahedral. Cis trans are both for tetrahedral and octahedral. Trans means opposite. And so what we could say is this one. This could be trans BD. This would be trans BA. This would be trans BC. So we leave one fixed. B, we leave fixed. And then we see we have three possible trans combinations. Um, A, C, D. Does that make sense? All right, so you should have gotten three isomers for this. All right, now I want you to do these. I want you to do tetrahedral MA2CD and do square planar MA2CD. That is, put two of the same on there and then see how many structures you can generate.